how often do you get a superannuation statement in the mail or in your email and you simply throw it out because it is confusing, you can't read it, and it just seems like you're reading a different language. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain how to read your superannuation statement and the top five things you should be checking or reviewing the next time you're reading yours. Okay, so just before I start the video, two things. One, this is all just general advice. There's no personal advice in this video. And it is one of our videos that's a part of our superannuation series. So if you wanna see the other videos we've made on superannuation, I'll put some links below, but check out our superannuation playlist on our YouTube channel. Okay, let's jump into the exciting world of superannuation statements. The first thing I will say is before we start digesting your statement or the whatever you've got in front of you or the one that you're going to compare this with is check the statement period. So are you looking at a quarterly statement? Are you looking at a half yearly statement or are you looking at a yearly statement? What's the time period? For this rest of this video, I'm going to be talking about everything in an annual basis. So if you're reading a half yearly to compare examples and compare my um, comments, you'll have to times it by two. Uh, or four if it's a quarterly statement. Okay, so number one thing we're gonna look at is the opening and closing balance of your statement. Uh, this should show your ins and your outs, like your inflows would be all the money your employer has put in uh, or any money you've personally added. What I want you to check here is, have you been paid correctly by your employer? They need to pay you a minimum of 9.5% of your wage. Um, to help just be able to do the maths just quicker in your head while you're reading it, reading it just call it 10%. So if you're on $70,000 per year, you should have roughly $7,000 in, contrib in contributions. If it's not at least close, you need to investigate. This section also shows investment returns, the tax you'll pay, if you have insurance premiums. The other interesting thing in this section is the fees. Uh, what they state here isn't the full, it, this isn't all the fees. So, but I'll get into that in the next section. Which brings us to the next section we wanna have a look at is flick through and find the section in your statement that talks directly about fees. They spl generally split them up into two different sections, direct and indirect. Direct means that you can actually see the money coming out of your account, while indirect means you're paying it in the background. Like investment fees are sometimes taken out before your investment returns are added to your account. And, I th what I thought I might do is just compare two different statements. So this first one with host plus, this gives you just these high level, indirect, direct admin, where with this one, it's a much longer list. Okay, so what are you checking in the fee section? Firstly, your overall fees. So add all the direct and indirect, take away your insurance and have a look what you're paying. If you're paying more than 1% of your total superannuation balance, I think it's time to have a bit of review if you're paying more than 2% of your total value, it's probably time to have a review like today, tomorrow. You also need to check this section here that says advice fees. This means you're paying a financial advisor to look after your super, which is fine as long as you actually have a financial advisor. One of the main findings we, through the Royal Commission, found that there were super, super accounts with some of the banks whether you were being charged a, an advice fee and you didn't actually have a financial advisor attached. So I'm not saying that having a financial advisor is bad, of course not, being a financial advisor. Uh, interestingly, Vanguard actually did uh, a study where they said, well, how, what, you know, what quantifiable benefit does a financial advisor bring to an investment account? They found that financial advisors add an extra value of up to 3% per year. So I'm not saying financial advisors are bad, just make sure you're not paying for one when you don't actually have one. Lastly, what I want you to check is for something called a contribution fee. This is a fee where if you add money into superannuation, they take a percentage of it just straight away. They're not that common anymore. They're in older superannuation accounts, but if you do have one, it's a pretty good warning sign that it's time to review. The next section of your superannuation statement we're gonna have a look at is your insurances. And it is a really great feature of our superannuation um, system that we can pay for, well, what I call is our human insurances. So when we're insuring ourselves, you're able to pay that from your superannuation. The three insurances that you will usually find in your superannuation are life, total and permanent disability, and your income protection. Uh, sometimes they'll call it salary continuance. 
This is the money you're going to live off if something unexpected happens. What I want you to review here is how you feel. If you feel like you don't want these insurances, well, you can cancel them. If you feel like you're all sorted, great, well done. If you feel like you don't have enough insurance or if you're unsure, this is the part where you do need to review it. Uh, I recommend seeing a professional or a financial advisor to get help with this um, section. We, the first step in working out your insurances is working out how much insurance you need. So we do have a free insurance needs analysis calculator. So I'll put a link below or above or below, you know, so jump onto our website, put in your situation and we can let you know how much insurance we think that you need. And the next section we're going to look at is your investment. How is the money inside your super being invested? Um, again, this is a pretty complicated topic. There, I will have another video on investment inside super, so check that out. But briefly, it goes something like this. You will see words that look, uh, you know, conservative or balanced or high growth. Um, these are different investment options, and they're generally decided upon based on how much you, how much time you have between now and when you're going to retire. So if you are young and you have 20, 30 years to retirement, options like high growth or growth are often selected by yourself or selected for you. If you are close to retirement, you know, under sort of 10 years, you will often have um, like a conservative option selected for you. Have a look through this section. Again, if, you, if it looks fine to you, great. If you do want it to be reviewed, again, talking to a financial advisor, professional getting help, it is a really good um, section to get help on. And the last section I want you to have a quick look at is your nomination. Often your superannuation is the biggest, and especially when you add in those insurances, it will probably be the biggest asset that you have. Um, in the event that you do pass away, you want your money to go to the person that you want it to go to. Um, if you don't have a nomination, your super fund has to decide who it goes to, and sometimes that can be a long process. So you can nominate what's called a binding nomination. Now, this is a legal term, so I thought I might just go ahead and quote Australian super and what they've written so that I'm not getting the terminology incorrect. A binding nomination instructs Australian super how to pay your death benefit if you die. As long as it's valid, your nomination is legally binding and we must follow it. That is why it's important to consider changing or cancelling your body nomination if your circumstances change so that your benefit will be paid in line with your current wishes. So consider having a body nomination so that everything we're doing here, you're saving your super, you're doing your insurances, go to the correct person. Uh, one of the comments they said in that little spiel is that it needs to be a valid body nomination. So this is A, the paperwork needs to be filled out. but there's only certain people you can nominate in a binding nomination. So it can be a spouse, you can be a, any of your children, a financial dependent, uh, if you're in an interdependency relationship, uh, or what it's saying there is a legal representative. Um, what that is just saying is you can nominate your super to go to your will, and then your will can then um, nominate that out. And that's the video on how to read your superannuation statement. If you've gone through this video or you see the specific sections that you feel like you do need to review, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us or contact your uh, financial advisor for more information. And I'll pop up a couple more videos from our superannuation series so you can watch those too. Thanks. Please subscribe and like us on all the social medias and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.